question. Absolutely, thank you. Hi, my name is Christopher Sabat. Uh, I'm the most commonly known as the voice of Vegeta, Piccolo, Yamcha, Mr. Popo, Kami, all the dragons, Gaz, Mez, Raccoon, Jace, Birder, Zar, Bon, uh, Bubbles, Icarus, and so forth. Uh, basically everything um, except for Frieza and Cell in uh, Dragon Ball Z. Um, I'm also, I guess I started about 20 years ago with a, a little company called Funimation, which is just like kind of almost like mom and pop little shop that somehow managed to get the license for Dragon Ball Z in 1998. They brought me in as a casting and voice director back then. Uh, I was just out of college, hardly knew what I was doing, but I guess neither did anyone else in Funimation really at that point, so I kind of fit in. Um, from there, we recorded a lot of Dragon Ball Z. Um, we recorded all of the, the kind of the main part of the series, a lot of the movies, and then uh, Funimation started buying up the rest of the universe, and then subsequently started doing roles in other anime. And now I think to date I've done maybe over 650, like 650 roles in anime, and I'm still currently working. Uh, most recently, I play All Might in One Piece. Sorry, All Might in My Hero Academia. Uh, Zoro in One Piece. Uh, I was just recently in a Popico in an episode of Pop Team Epic, which is a crazy show. Um, I was I played a, a huge, tall, black preacher in uh, Panty and Stocking featuring Garbell, <laughs> and uh, Giro and Sergeant Frog, and uh, of course, if, if, it, if it's, it's probably important to mention again that I am also the voice of Yamcha, so if we could, yeah, if we could focus all your questions only on Yamcha today, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. So round robin style, it's like... I'm just going to take questions from them. Oh, I like it. Chance, yeah. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll follow. We'll start. We'll start. Cool. Uh, so have you? Uh, you've already beaten Sean in Dragon Ball Fighters. Yes. Do you have challenges for any of the other actors? I mean, I already beat Goku, so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> who else. What about uh, Gohan. Gohan, it'd be just it'd be an easy target unless <laughs> unless Piccolo maybe like 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 Piccolo took on Gohan, but then he would let him win because he's kind of the dad figure. Um, I'm actually really scared now because I have heard that Ian Sinclair, who plays Whis in the show, uh, and Clifford Chapin, he's the voice of, uh, what is his name? Uh, oh my gosh, the, the, the little Saiyan guy um, the, uh, from Planet Sadala. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, it's been a long day guys, this is uh, my second con of the weekend by the way. Uh, I've heard that they're really really good at the game, so uh, I'm very scared to play them. I'm still willing to do a rematch with Sean to see if he can actually learn how to play the game. Because he was a bit too lazy the first time. He claims it's because he didn't get the game and that I might have accidentally sent it to his accountant instead of to his address, which I didn't know. Uh, he says that's the reason he didn't play it, but I just, you know, I think it's just because he didn't work hard enough. Because if it were me and I hadn't gotten my copy of the game, I would be, I'd, I'd stab a fool to get my copy if I knew I had to compete against somebody on uh, a live stream. Good questions? Thank you. Speaking of Yamcha, yeah. So, what would you personally do to make Yamcha better for the show, or would you have like a spin-off show? I've actually Yamcha. joked about a spin-off show between like Yamcha and Vegeta living in an apartment together. Which really <laughs> yeah. uh, there actually is out there in the universe. This isn't actually a real thing. This does actually exist. I'm not making it up. It's a manga that's been authorized by uh, powers that be. It's called. Uh, it's, it's, I'm trying to get the name exactly right. Like, the case of being reborn as Yamcha. If you've never heard of that, you should, should you look it up because it's about a, a crazy otaku fanboy, super familiar with the Dragon Ball Z series, who uh, falls on his head and then wakes up in Yamcha's body at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z with all of the knowledge of all of Dragon Ball in his head and then makes himself kind of the main character and it's super brilliant, but you really should read it if you haven't had a chance to. Awesome. Any questions on the Sure. Oh, there's, there's a big purple question right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> What's good, Chris? It's Bob Bergner right here. Yeah. Um, out of all the characters you've ever played, who would you trust more with the Infinity Gauntlet? Oh, man. 
Well, that's actually, that's a, I would say right now I would love to give, if I could give it to someone, I would give it to All Might. All Might, uh, All Might would put it to good use. Nice. He would, his hand would actually probably fit in there. <laughs> um, is that the one that kind of like has the little rings where you can articulate the fingers and stuff like that? Yeah, that thing is amazing. I, sorry, I know this isn't about his glove, but I saw that at the last convention I was at and I kind of want it real bad. Uh, I'm not even like, I've never actually been that much into comic books, but I just like articulating gloves for some reason. Why? Yeah. Oh, okay. We only we'll be taking all the cosplayed as characters questions first. Okay. Oh well, perfect. <laughs> totally perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. So, fajita. Yes, I see what's happening. Fajita, yes. <laughs> so, why did you give me a sense of me? Why did you let me obtain this perfect form? Well. Watch you. Because I knew that ultimately you would fail anyway. Um, <laughs> if the, the Saiyans have one shortcoming, it's that they literally do have to constantly uh, one-up each other on the power thing. And Goku, while he was maintained as the, as the hero character of Dragon Ball Z, uh, and it worked when you guys were kids to try and inject this whole, like, well, he's the hero. Uh, over the years, I've certainly realized that uh, Goku is the worst. Like, yes. he yes. is, he is, he's, he's only like a hero because he just wants to fight the strongest person. It's, he will save all of his friends, but he will also put them in huge danger and then kind of spend a little long training while they get beaten to death, um, just to so he can fight somebody really strong. So. Yeah, I think that's that's a big problem. I think that was just in Vegeta's nature. That's why he wanted to let Cell have his way. Any other questions? Um, whose voice caused the most strain on you, or which one's the most difficult to do about all your? Uh, okay, so it's a it's actually a tie, and there's somebody that you would kind of you wouldn't expect. One of them is Vegeta, obviously, because to do a scratchy voice, you have to put a lot of air, like twice as much air as normal. Like I could scream as Yamcha all day. I could do sessions as Yamcha, like all day but in order to make Vegeta's voice you just basically have to take Yamcha's voice and shred it because Yamcha's like up here and Vegeta's like the same voice you just have to push so much air and close the back of your throat up and after a while it just makes the your vocal cords kind of swollen um, and the more swollen they get the harder it is to uh, like differentiate between Vegeta and Piccolo's voice sometimes um, but oddly enough the character that killed me was uh, Raccoon uh, because uh, Raccoon has this voice, and you have to hold your throat out like this. And that is hard to do over an extended period of time. I didn't realize that that would be the one character where I'd completely lose my voice for days. Usually I can bounce back pretty fast, but I went to an ENT. I went to a, a, had to go to the doctor after a long Raccoon session. He was like, yeah, don't do that anymore. I'm like, well, that's not an option. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Questions? So you can do uh, Yamcha all day, but Oh yeah, uh, Yamcha is like, he's probably the coolest character in the show because uh, he started off pretty rad in Dragon Ball, but he got kind of screwed, you know? <laughs> uh, that poor guy, I, actually, I love Yamcha and I'm, I'm very vocal about this on social media that I have, like, in fact, uh, Bandai Namco and I have this great relationship together because they somehow share the same uh, kind of a whole like the, this place in their heart for Yamcha because he got screwed so hard. And one of the, I've been bringing a print that I sell at conventions now uh, because I used to have a print of just Yamcha and it was, it was boring. I made one that just has a speech bubble over his head and I can write whatever I want into it. And it's super fun because most of the time it's like I'm fine, seriously, I'm okay, I'm just I'm just resting. Um, and I'm obs I'm just obsessed with Yamcha in the crater. I, like I've been. Uh, <laughs> My favorite action figure that I own, I'm not even kidding, I own a lot of them, is my dead Yamcha figure. <laughs> it's a real thing, and if you don't have it, you should get it, because you can put it, like, surprise your relatives and put it in the middle of, like, an apple pie at, at Thanksgiving, and it'll surprise everyone and make them very happy and freak out your grandparents, because they don't know what that character is. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to let him pick people, otherwise I'll just stare at everyone. <laughs> Um, reading through the cell and the boo saga, did it make you feel any kind of way knowing that Vegeta kind of made things worse? Uh, 
Man, Vegeta always seems to make things worse in a lot of ways. Uh, although, if they had listened to Vegeta in the beginning, they would like. If they'd listened to him at the beginning of the Boo Saga, they would have been over really fast because he just wanted to like fly in and smash everything to pieces and call it a day. Uh, but I always joke that if Vegeta were the main character of the show, the show would be over in like ten episodes. <laughs> um, I think. I don't know what it is why Akira Toriyama has this thing about never letting Vegeta have his day. Uh, yeah. But oddly enough, because of that, Vegeta is, in my opinion, the character with the most development over the whole story. Like, Goku mm -hmm. pretty yeah. much stayed the same. Yeah. Uh, he stayed kind of an idiot the whole way through. Mm -hmm. uh, but Vegeta, what's remarkable about his character is that, and I, I've really been thinking about this a lot lately, because uh, there have been a lot of topics of who's a better dad, Vegeta or Piccolo, or sorry, Vegeta or... Uh, and although Piccolo is admittedly, like, I think he's the best dad in the whole uh, series. But people are like, oh, Vegeta's a better dad than Goku. And it's cool that we finally got to a point, after knowing him for so many years, of Vegeta being, like, somebody that you think is a nice guy. Because we've forgotten that he literally just destroyed his friend uh, at the beginning, he killed uh, a buddy of his that he was uh, one of his colleagues for just not being good enough uh, earlier on in the show. And so he's literally had such a change in his in his personality. He had such a redemption in that Boo arc that uh, everyone thinks he's a good guy now, and I think that's awesome. I think he, I think a lot of people who watch this show struggled with. You know, some people just liked it because it was a cool show about people fighting, but a lot of people watch the show because they were struggling with either a long stay in a hospital or like they had things going on in their life that just were hard to deal with and they were allowed to escape into that show where they had, you know, they were working out or they were football players and they were trying to get stronger. Um, and so it's, it's really cool to be associated with something like that. And Vegeta, I think, is an inspiration to a lot of people who have not necessarily been good people and want to make their lives better and be a family man and have kids and actually be nice to them and stuff like that. Um, aside from the fact that Vegeta is life, uh, <laughs> Vegeta's life, Vegeta's day, I love Vegeta, but uh, moving into Super though, how do we feel about Yamcha being completely sidelined during the tournament when they straight hit him with uh, Yamcha was in the back talking about, oh yeah, they're just going to call me, I can't wait for them to call me for the tournament, and he just gets sidelined for the entire season. Oh. He, it's just, there's just no luck whatsoever is gonna happen for He's Yamcha. The, Yamcha's the only character that gets screwed harder than Vegeta in the series, and I think it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> because the more that you can beat up on Yamcha, I think he, like the Japanese would not have made a dead Yamcha figure if they weren't in on this joke. Like the, <laughs> the baseball episode alone was brilliant for him. Uh, Yam and there's this moment, and we just dubbed it, so it's kind of fresh on my mind, but there's this moment where he's uh, on second base, he's already been like, he's already been kicked twice by Beerus and uh, and Vegeta, like the simultaneously trying to get to second. Uh, and he's already been beamed by a baseball on the side. Um, but he's looking, like it just cuts to Yamcha and he's like staring up at the sun or something, like staring up at the clouds. And the Japanese translation is pretty boring. It's just like, gosh, I hope I make it out alive today or something like that. But I've probably spent 45 minutes trying to find a, a really funny or interesting way to write that line, just trying to rewrite it. So, I mean, it was iterations like, hey, Sky, how's it going? <laughs> you ever have one of those lives like when like nothing ever went right for you? <laughs> um, but we just couldn't figure out, like, and we, because at the, right after that cut, he sort of cuts back to Yamcha. He's like, no, I'm going to win this thing. Uh, so we couldn't go too far out. Uh, but yeah, that guy, poor, poor dude, poor dude. And that's why I love him, though. I think we kind of love, he's just that guy that like you like to beat up on. In fact, I love, one thing I love injecting into the series that's not necessarily in the Japanese uh, is this, the, the concept that Yamcha's still hanging around <laughs> Bulma's house all the time. Like, his, he's, he's, like, he's out of the picture, really, except I don't think I would like it. Even if I was like super nice guy, I wouldn't really like it if my wife's ex-boyfriend just was always around, like just always hanging out. And so, for, and so for a guy like Vegeta, who's super angry already, I love trying to inject little things into the story. Like um, I remember in the there's a scene where Vegeta is 
on the deck of the boat at Bulma's birthday party, and she comes over and she's like, why don't you, why don't you come to the party? Why don't you come hang out with everyone? And the original line was like, I don't like parties or something like that. And I changed it to, sure, let's go see Yamcha. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea that he's just always there is like, he's always a thorn in Vegeta's side. <laughs> 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 right. In regards to um, fan base dubs like DBZ and Bridge, how you feel that, uh, I guess, the Vegeta character in that dub relates to your actual Vegeta? Oh man, he's like, Lonnie Pator is really, really, really good. Like, the, the Team Four Star has a really special place, I think, in the legacy of Dragon Ball Z. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that the people who, you know, made Dragon Ball Z are in love with them, but <laughs> I do think that they've, like, Dragon Ball Z abridged really filled an, a space in people, in like Dragon Ball fans' hearts when there wasn't any other Dragon Ball. Like, the Dragon Ball, the series has ended, like you just gotten to the point where like there was nothing else to watch. There were no good games at that point. Like, and they just kind of showed up. Like, luckily, making this show where they like the Vegeta voice is really funny. Actually, they, I wish our Vegeta was a little bit more like his sometimes. <laughs> uh, Piccolo, I had a double take when I first heard that. Uh, it was pretty much spot on. Um, but yeah, I think I think the. the I don't know. It's it's a tough thing to talk about because I know that it's it's not supposed to you know supposed to encourage people to take somebody's animation and do your own thing with it. But you can't deny the fact that it was really funny and really brilliant, and still is. Like the guys are. I hope to see them do. I hope to see Team Four Star do some really interesting original content in the future. Because one thing, whether you like Team Four Star or not, or whether you agree with what they do or not. The fact is, they've made a lot of production. They've done a lot of work, and they keep doing it. And uh, it's that sort of work ethic that's really inspiring to me. Because a lot of us can sit there and pick something apart and say, I don't like this or that. But to actually sit down and make, write and make those shows happen when they really, you know, they weren't getting paid to do that. They weren't making any money. They just did it for the pure love and fandom of it. Like, I, res I respect them a lot, actually. I heard a rumor about some boy sanders. Remain nameless. It, uh, at a certain con, you actually married two individuals. Uh, Saying part is oh, that true. That is true. That is uh, true. I uh, at Kameha Con a few weeks ago. I think it was maybe four weeks ago at this point. I uh, became ordained so that I could marry somebody dressed as. Vegeta and Bulma oh. at the convention, and it was it was really it was really fun. Like it was, I was exhausted at that point because it was on a Sunday, and I've never been more exhausted at a convention in my life because it's the first time I've I've ever gotten to be like David Tennant at a convention before. <laughs> like, but every, I go to all these other pop culture cons and stuff, and there's always like way bigger guests than me. But I felt like the coolest guy in the room at that con, um, and doing that was really fun. I, I, they asked, they, they offered to pay me, uh, but I told them the only thing I want was them to make me like the priest robes that have the like, Vegeta symbology on them. And, and so that was the deal, and they made it happen, and it was awesome. So they were really fun. Not a service I'd be able to offer very many people, <laughs> but, busy, but uh, it's not something I would be opposed to doing again. I also realized that priest robes. Very hot. <laughs> like when you zip those things all the way up, you're a baking in there. I felt like uh, somebody like cosplaying as the Hulk or something with full on hair or something. It was just it was really hot. Um, outside of all, outside of Dragon Ball, but out of the um, voices that you've done and also the um, shows that you've been in, is there any other favorites that you like or wish that would get more airtime? Uh, I really wish that Sergeant Frog had been more popular in the United States. Uh, that show is so huge in Japan. Like you, you could still, I mean, to, you could fly over there now and probably buy Sergeant Frog tampons or something like that. Like <laughs> they, it is a very popular show there. One Piece, while it is, while it has done well, uh, and I see, I meet a lot of people at conventions that it really resonates with. 
I wish that show had done, I wish that show would do a little bit better. I wish it like, stayed alive, stayed on television. It's just a huge, daunting task to get someone into a show that's already seven, 800 episodes long and probably will double in size. By the end, you can't get new fans into that show. You're like, hey, just just watch 9,000 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> get me into it. Uh, let's see. Pop Team Epic actually became a much bigger thing than they were hoping it would be, and I'm very happy about that because I love that show. Um, I'd love to see a second season of Panty and Stocking. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a second season of, um, <clears throat> oh, uh, let's see, Fruits Basket. <gasps> or uh, I wouldn't mind seeing, let's see, God, there's so many shows I wouldn't mind seeing more of. Uh, it's it's a shame when you get to the end of a series that you really like and it's just done. Um, I I always wanted them to make another Fooly Cooly, but it looks like they've already done that. Um, <laughs> and of course, I want them to continue making Dragon Ball forever. We'll just see if that's what Akira Toriyama wants to do. I, we just have to beg him hard enough and I'll hold our hands to the sky and give him all the energy that he needs. So. <laughs> I got two questions for you. Sure. Right. First question, hypothetical, who would make, would Yamcha have possibly made a better father than Vegeta? <laughs> would Yamcha made a better father than Vegeta? Ah. Uh, short run and long run, because I think, I know in the short run, definitely, you will pull up your own kid. I think if he had a, I think he would be a good dad, because I, you know, he's good at baseball, he could play catch with his son <laughs> a little bit. Uh, he's. Yeah, he likes cats, he's really good to animals, so if you're good to animals, you're typically very good yeah. to kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, his his, uh, his kids uh, like have a chance of always being better than he is, so that gives like, <laughs> 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 them the goal to achieve, to be better than dad, which is pretty easy, so. <laughs> and then a uh, second question would be, all characters um, they've done are very potent, like they stand out a great deal. I do know some people when they go into voice acting, they are very, uh, like they start acting almost like their characters a little bit, just in daily interactions. So yeah, just, yeah. Like with All Might being so, being All Might or uh, achieving Cheeto Piccolo being Piccolo, do you see yourself doing that? I, well, in dubbing particularly, when, because you're in the booth for a long time from playing a major part, um, and you, it, I know if I do a long session of Vegeta, I'm super angry, and my wife knows that I've recorded Vegeta that day. I just <laughs> come home and I'm in a crap mood. Not as much in Super because he actually has a lot of fun moments, and it's. Um, but when I'm All Might, I feel like you're looking at the character, you're watching the screen, and you're trying to put the that character and the voice and the words into his mouth. You can't help but like sympathetically try and you pose like that character does. Not exactly, but you. I, I will find myself, you know, posing the way he does a little bit within reason. And so you can't help but just feel like you're kind of injected with the feeling of your character throughout the session. You can leave, like, I'll leave in a pretty good mood. Every time I recorded Pop Team, I always came home like, in a really fun mood. Um, the, like, Vegeta is really fun, except he just is exhausting. You know? Sometimes I just feel like I need to sleep, but I've got a five-year-old, and sorry, a three-year-old and a seven-year-old, and they don't let me do anything. Uh, there's no such thing as sleep in my house. Yeah. More question. Sure. Okay. Um, so I know there's a big conversation between whether or not Vegeta is stronger than Goku at the end of the Tournament of Power. Uh huh. Especially with Goku getting all the help he got to win. But um, well, not to win, but whatever. But um, so what's your opinion on that? I, I mean. If I was to believe Akira Toriyama, I would have to say he's not, because Akira Toriyama always gives Vegeta the shaft. Um, <laughs> he always gets shafted on the, the power level type thing. I also feel like Goku and Vegeta are just, I think they're constantly, it's like they're almost like a, a, a it's like quantum, but it's sort of constantly more and less powerful than one another at the same time, and I think that's what makes them a good, pairing in the show is that they're that Vegeta is always wanting to be better than Goku and if he wasn't so much so he probably would have given up um, I don't know if you guys are in my panel uh, just a minute ago but I have to tell the story again because I've only I've only recently been thinking it's kind of off subject a little bit but I've recently been thinking about a question asked, someone asked me in a previous panel which was why haven't they wished back planet Vegeta right. and uh 
I, I thought about that a lot, and I was realizing like that'd be kind of cool. Except Vegeta would have to like literally make a speech to the whole planet to basically say, "Guys, uh, sorry, uh, you know." You've all been dead, so you haven't heard any of this, but we're all nice people now. We don't, uh, we don't take over planets and sell them to highest bidders anymore. We do, you don't have to send your children off in the space box. You actually have to raise them. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm not kidding. No, I'm serious. Uh, yeah, it would be really funny if the planet did come back because he would have a very difficult time convincing everyone to kind of live what has become Vegeta's new lifestyle. So maybe you wouldn't want to bring him back for that reason because... I mean, yes, they did die at Frieza's hand, but I don't think they were that great of people to begin with. So, <clears throat> bring back Plant Namek all day, though. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming today. I appreciate it. Do we have time to take some pictures?